But I thought I'd start actually by telling you about a patient of mine. It's easy to get caught up in the, uh, you know, in all the jargon and in the spreadsheets and in the business models and forget that the real reason we're all here is because people get sick. Uh, and people, and that's our job, is to take care of them. And someday that'll be us, that'll be our mother, that'll be our father. So I'll tell you about uh, a patient of mine. Uh, her name is Sharon. <clears throat> and Sharon uh, was a single mom, grew up in Revere, Massachusetts. It's a, a working class town north of Boston. She uh, married a jockey when she was really young, had three girls, and the jockey decided to go and go elsewhere. So she raised her three girls by herself. Worked really hard, had several jobs to try and make ends meet. Uh, when I met her, she was working for Liberty Mutual, which was a big insurance company in Boston. And she also had a chart the size of a phone directory. So poor Sharon had severe uh, COPD, or lung disease. She, like many women of her generation, had started smoking at age 13 and had smoked literally a pack or two of cigarettes from age 13 to age 59. She quit right before I met her. Um, and so her lungs were toast. You know, she could barely walk across a room without, uh, without stopping to breathe. She had home oxygen. She was on uh, standing prednisone. She was on every nebulizer and inhaler I'd ever heard of. She also had diabetes, hypertension. She had had a minor heart attack. She'd had a blood clot in her lung. She had uh, osteoporosis. Uh, reflux disease, and uh, arguably some little bit of depression. Sharon was on 27 medications when I met her, and that's not counting her PRNs, the stuff she took periodically. And she had spent most of the last year in an institution. She had been in a hospital or rehab or a SNF, a skilled nursing facility, and would just bounce around between those, right? So in the hospital, get well enough to get discharged to rehab, may have a setback, go back to the hospital, well enough to go to a SNF, get back to the rehab, back to the hospital. Uh, she had spent every major holiday in an institution, which her family really had a very close family and they couldn't really celebrate holidays with her. Um, and the days when she wasn't in the hospital or a rehab or a sniff, when she was at home, most of them were taken up going to one of 11 different specialists that she had sort of accumulated, like barnacles on a ship. She had two cardiologists, three pulmonologists. What would happen, she'd go to a hospital, you know, she'd get sick, call 911. The hospital she used to go to was on divert. So they'd go to a different hospital where she'd pick up a new pulmonologist who said, follow up with me afterwards. She didn't know well enough that she shouldn't do that as well as the other ones, so she'd go to see three of them. Uh, so the family had no idea what the plan was. She, um, you know, her outcomes were awful. Everyone had to take days off from work to take care of her, and no one had a sense of what was happening. And Sharon's cost the system, we actually were able to look back at her claims through Blue Cross of Massachusetts, uh, $280,000 in the past year, right? So this is what you know, some people would call an edge case, but unfortunately it illustrates I think, too much of what's wrong with the system now, right? It's fragmented, it's reactive and not proactive. No one is really looking out, no one ever asked Sharon what she wanted, right? They all did their own thing. Everyone in the little silo is doing what they think the best thing to do is, and then the outcome is poor. So I'll end by just talking, giving the end of the story about Sharon, about what you know, what happened to her. So she came to our practice. The first thing we did is we, we do what's called a shared care plan, where we really sit down with the patient and their family and figure out what are we going to do to make your health better. Sharon was complicated. I said, let's go to your house. So I picked a time when her three daughters were in town on a Sunday and went to her home with, with our health coach, Kelly, and we sat down for three hours. And, and it was hard. It was a huge chart, huge bu buckets of medications, what, what she's taking. Um, and really straighten stuff out, right? So we got rid of 20 out of her 27 medications. She was, she was taking Lipitor. Like, she was not going to live more than a year. Like, why are, we ta why are we lowering her cholesterol? Like, who cares, right? Um, we had a real talk about, about goals of care. You know, and so she was on this really restrictive diet. And we talked to her family, like, you know, let her eat cheese. She loves cheese. Like, fine, eat cheese. Like, that's OK. We trimmed down her specialist completely. We got rid of most of them except for two. And we got those two to agree that they were going to communicate with me. Every time they saw her, I was going to need a copy of the note. We agreed to have a once a week conference call with the three daughters and myself, and occasionally have one of the specialists on it too, to talk about how her care was going and what was happening. We, uh, over the course of time, kind of talked and educated them about the conditions, got some service in. We finally got everyone to agree that the goals of care were not to be heroic and that we weren't going to be able to cure her, that we would sort of move more toward palliative care and got her some services in the house. Uh, we couldn't fix her disease. I mean, she was, her lungs were too far gone. She was not a transplant candidate. Uh, but everyone was okay with that. We were working on quality of life. Uh, for the next year, she actually had only two stays in a hospital for about three days each. She spent Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter at home with a big party with her family in her, 
in her own house, which, which was great for everyone. Um, about a year after we met her, her disease turn, took a turn for the worse, and we all agreed and, and, and we confirmed that we were not going to do anything heroic, and she passed away in her bed with her three daughters by her side um, at home. Um, you know, there are people who argue this is unrealistic and this is not scalable, but I think that the, the, the problem is the economics of this work out. We spent probably $10,000 in Sharon's last year of life versus 280,000 the year before with a much better quality of life and a much better experience. Um, and it's because we actually took the time and put the team around to engage with her and her family. Um, again, there are people who say this is unrealistic, but I think the bottom line is this is exactly the care that we would want for ourselves or for our family. I don't know why we tolerate anything else and make, make excuses about why we can't do this. So uh, I think it's time that we fix healthcare. I think we need to have the courage, to be honest, to actually make changes in how we deliver it, stop putting up with excuses, and raise the bar. So thank you.